listen to my thoughts on day 2020 and this is the third time i'm recording this audio because i keep breaking the audio and it sounds like how i'll put a clip right now of what it sounded like well no i'm not sure anymore okay okay great life's great anyways if there's background right now that's why accept it i'm sorry anyways before i get into my thoughts on beer 2020 i wanted to remind you that the docuseries not series it's just one video it's like 30 minutes the problematic chain does in fact come out on november 25th of this year so a reminder set your calendars set your kids set your doggos set your feet to november 25th and that's, in fact, why we're releasing it. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's get back to Boo 2020. Also, I found out the thing that was making my audio glitch was the cable I was using, because I was using a different cable than I normally use, but that's beyond the point. Anyways, on paper, Boo 2020 looks like a good event. It has everything it should have. It's socially distanced at first glance, and it looks like it could be a fun place to bring the family. But once you get there, well, to start with, I had medium expectations for this, like lower than I had for normal Six Flags stuff. Because it's Six Flags, it can't be that great. You know what I mean? Yeah, you. Ah! Anyways, so let's first talk about the shows, because I think that was the biggest failure out of the whole event. So to start with, you had the show that was in Toyota Stadium, which felt like it was written just for people, not for dolphins. And then they just had dolphins thrown in where they could. And that seems to be a common occurrence in all three of the shows they had. Because they all weren't that good. Except for one, I it was okay compared to the other two. Not saying much. So it was like dolphin stories, but it was mainly people. And then they just had humans, so, like, dolphins thrown in where they could fit them. So that was strange and made me uncomfortable to watch. But we're not going to talk about that anymore. The second show was Ghoul School. And it was also the only other one they advertised, like, as a group. And it was okay. It wasn't great. It wasn't bad. It, it, it's a good idea. The actors, you could tell, tried. But overall, I think it was on a really bad level of shows for the Six Sides parts. I think it was below average. It was not the greatest. It wasn't bad. Um, The first time was actually really funny because when the animals got loose and just started swimming circles, that was the most entertaining thing that happened that day. I mean, not the nicest way. Anyways, <laughs> the third one was... I don't even really know what happened. It was like a costume party with dolphins and the trainers. It was cool. Not gonna lie, it was a good show. It was fun to watch until the sponsored advertisements started. And that's where we're gonna end it because I don't wanna have post traumatic stress. <laughs> Anyways, the next main draw for the event was the Trigger Treat Trail. Put quotes around that editor, Andrew okay anyways so it wasn't a trail and i wouldn't call it a trick-or-treat trail either or even a trick or a treat i think it was just a trick actually um so it was the entrance to looney tunes in front of monsoon falls and it was only that 15 foot path except they used six feet of it and you it was basically a trick or grab it wasn't anything you just got the candy and left so, I'm kind of disappointed, but I don't know what I expected. It's six legs. And the candy was expired. The ones I got were expired, but we're not going to talk about that. Anyways, the next thing... Yeah, I don't have many good things to say about this event. Just accept it. So, the second thing about this event that I want to complain about is the food. They advertised a lot of this weird Halloween food. I wasn't planning on eating any of it to start with, but I wanted to go see it. Like, if I wanted to get some of it, because I forgot it, because I haven't done uh, videos a while ago. And yeah, if there's background noise, I'm sorry. 
Anyways. So we go there, and the stall was closed. So I went on two separate days, and it was closed each day. And they left the menu up. And they just didn't have the stuff anymore. And it was like, this was the second day of the event. And I went the third day and the last day. So I went, like, three days apart each time. That's not how math works, but yeah. <laughs> Oh, wait, yeah, it is. I can count, as you can tell. Anyways, the food wasn't there. The trick or treat trail wasn't a trick or trail. Um, the shows were below average, but the decorations were really good. They were like on Fright Fest par. So I'm going to be playing photos of the front entrance right now. The stage, the Animal Shade stage, was all decorated. And the Discovery Kingdom grass had a giant skeleton on it. All the buildings in the park had this stereotypical Fright Fest cobwebs, which I'm here for. And if you went down by Monsoon Falls, you were going to hit two things. One was like uh, a frontier carriage, I want to say. It was cool. It had like skeletons. At one point, the first time I went, they had like a cowboy dead cowboy in front of it he creeped me out because i stared at his eyes directly and he stared at mine every time we walked by and it was i don't like human contact or any eye contact in general so like yeah and then if you walked a little bit farther down that path you'd hit like a almost like sarah sent graveyard on the hill by chap not chabot stadium the sea lion stadium on the hill, and if you went a little bit farther, there was a church, so that looked really cool. That was one of the places you could get photos with ghouls. And there wasn't much else. To be honest, most of the park is the same. They played eerie music the whole time, so that, like, anxiety, yay. Anyways, yeah. This video was originally 10 minutes, so I don't know where the time went. I, uh, editor Andrew here, and you know it's time I insult myself, because I forgot the most important thing. So, I forgot Scarecrow Hollow. It was like a walking thing. It was probably a fire hazard. But that's beyond the point, because it was by the M&M stairs, but you couldn't go down the M&M stairs. It was covered with metal fences. So you'd go up the wheelchair ramp, which was split in half. It was claustrophobic, but it was beyond the point. So, at the middle of it, you had to go buy some ghouls that were a photo opportunity. It was really cool. I actually got a photo. You should go check my Instagram out to go see it. Me and my friend, who's not my ex. Um, life's great. And I'm also, later this week, going to post a walkthrough of the whole thing. Because it was really cool. And I hope you guys got to experience it. And if not, you should go check that out later this week. Anyways, back to the rest of the scheduled recording. I don't know what it's called. They had hollow. I got a Geico Gecko. They were handing Geico Geckos out when we left. Just for free. So it's like, Sucks, if you want to give me more of those, like, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> yeah, they're really cute. I'm um, gonna check my Instagram story out. It's not up anymore. Go follow my Instagram so you can see things like that when I post them. So anyways, right before this video comes to a close, I wanted to remind you that the docuseries comes out November 25th. The problematic chain won't be in theaters. <laughs> Anyways, with that, you have hit the break run and have a great rest of your, I can't say Halloween, um, have a great rest of your Christmas because no one cares about Thanksgiving. <laughs>